You own that? Yeah. Looks better with me it's in my hand. Yeah. It's our recording? Yeah, yeah. You're good? Yeah. I didn't know if you were scrumming or what you were doing. No, no. We all want a little bit of the pie. You know, we don't want to share it. Um, so, Dana White, welcome back to Abu Dhabi. You know, sometimes we've had a little bit of a quiet period in mixed martial arts, but when you finish that quiet period with a card like this, it's as good as it gets, right? You have an amazing main card, some great prelims. What are your thoughts heading into tomorrow night? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't know if we've been too quiet. We had like one or two days off uh, in the last. I don't know. How well, you long. made us take a day off, so yeah. maybe I've had yeah, a quieter right, period right, than you. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those cards that's so good with such great fights, such competitive fights, so many questions to be answered. It's just, it's, it's exciting even for somebody like me who's there every friggin' Saturday and, and makes the fights. Yeah. Would you agree with me that if you're going to pick someone who could potentially beat Islam, it would be someone like Charles Oliveira, and if you're going to pick someone who could beat Charles, you'd pick someone like Islam. Would you agree that both of these guys are almost perfectly made for each other? A hundred percent. You couldn't make a more perfect fight stylistically. Um, both guys in their prime. It's just, it, it, you know, one of the things about Oliveira is he flies way under the radar yeah. with a lot of people. I think he's finally starting to build up that respect that he deserves from, you know, the fans, the media, and whoever else. But, you know, uh, broke every record that you could break, uh, you know, finished like 10 of his last opponents or 11 of his last 12, whatever it is, um, has beat the who's who in the nastiest division in the sport. And then a guy like Islam, who is this, uh, you know, I guess almost prodigy, if you will, you know, the, that Habib and his dad have built uh, since he was young. And the only thing that you would say about him is he hasn't had uh, the, 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 the same type of fights. He hasn't fought as good of opponents as uh, Oliveira, but he trains with the baddest dude in the world every day. So um, the other thing is I, I think where the odds makers are really missing in this fight is Oliveira seen it all, done it all, been in the big fights. Islam, how's Islam going to deal with the pressure on Saturday night? He's never had to deal with, uh, with this type of pressure before. I think one of the most underrated things in fighting that people kind of always maybe skip over is momentum. Like when you have someone with momentum, they can just sort of do things that they wouldn't have been able to do when they're coming off a loss or something like that. And Charles Oliveira and Islam both have crazy right. momentum. Right. And you said about Charles is sort of coming into his own. I think this week, like he's you know, sprinting onto the scales to weigh and he's sprinting off. Like the guy just seems to have a bit of an aura around him. I think he's finally reached that moment. And yet you've got Islam, who basically everyone's in a way sort of been waiting like, well, that's probably the champion in the future. Mm -hmm. Like, let's get it. So it's kind of the perfect meeting at the perfect time. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, yeah, this is all going to come down to uh, how they both feel that night when they get in the octagon and, and I think nerves, adrenaline dump, and what that all means is experience. Like I said before, Oliveira's got way more experience in big fights than Islam does. Yeah. This is one of those fights that when they're in the middle touching gloves, you're like nearly having a heart attack cage side, right? Yeah, the walkout's going to be incredible as soon as they come out and, you know, when Buffer starts his whole intro, it's, it's going to be awesome. Co-main event, you've got TJ Dillashaw and Aljamain Sterling. Again, Aljamain, we mentioned a bit with Charles, still kind of struggling to find that respect from the fans. You know, he won the title against PD Ant, still a very close fight. We obviously had the knee before that. Beating a guy like TJ, who could be considered the greatest in the division's history, that's the one that will finally probably put him over that line and get him the respect from the fans, right? Yeah, you, you, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, Aljamain has one of those personalities. When, you, when you're one-on-one -on -one with Aljamain, he's a great kid. You know, when he gets out in public, he's, he's you know... He doesn't do himself any favors, let's just put it that way. And uh, the question is with Dillashaw is, does he still have it? You know, sometimes guys show up and he's been off for a while and, you know, he's had to battle, uh, you know, a lot of controversy and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where he's at. Does he still have it? Because mm -hmm. you're right, he's, he's one of the best of all time. Yeah. Then obviously you got the P.D. Yan fight with Sean O'Malley. P.D. Yan yesterday calling him a whore by the side of the road, which is kind of out of character for P.D. Yan. But I guess Sean O'Malley can rub you up the, right, the wrong way sometimes. When you look at this fight, you mentioned it's like a Conor Aldo sort of situation where it's the moment that Sean O'Malley can break out and become that superstar. It's almost a bit different, right? Because Conor was on this crazy trajectory and Sean O'Malley's last fight, you know, is sort of a bit weird with Munoz. But P.D. Yan is so crazy good that for Sean O'Malley, it's like he would have to up his game multiple levels to be able to beat this guy, right? Yeah, it, it's not different. It's, it, you, you have that, that thing that people are attracted to, people like you or whatever, but then you have to win the key fights that, that, that come your way. And not every fight is going to be an incredible performance, uh, you know, 
where, where you knock guys out spectacularly, but you have to win. You have to win these key fights. And uh, th this, this reminds me of the Jose Aldo fight for Connor. You know what I mean? When you look at Peter Jan, who he is, what he's accomplished, uh, how good he is, how well-rounded he is, this, this is a big fight for O'Malley. If O'Malley wins, he's kind of like, he's got those Connor sort of similarities, but he is a bit unique himself, right? You don't, I don't know if we've had a guy like him in the sport who's big, smokes weed, he's like a stoner, plays video games. Is he yeah. like a unique guy? Can he get a unique audience for you guys? I'm definitely not calling him Connor. You know, th yeah. this was something that, that the media had asked me earlier in the week. Um, you know, he said, yeah, I'd like to be the next big superstar like Connor. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's why I wouldn't compare him and Connor in any way, shape, or form. Connor is unique, O'Malley is unique, you know, every guy and girl that fights here is unique in their own ways. Um, but if you want to talk about him being a global superstar like Connor, this is a big, this is a big fight for him. It's a great card. I can't, I'm, I'm, Kyle, I'm as excited for this one as I have been for any in a long, long time. Outside of this, slap fighting. Mm. Is this like the play to get Nate back or what's the story with slap <laughs> no, fighting? I've, I've been working on this for years. I've been working on this, this since like, uh, 2017 or 18, and uh, finally got it together. And, and, and you know, we're gonna uh, we're gonna launch here soon. And I'm gonna give more details. We have a television deal. Everything's aligned and ready to roll. So it's it's gonna be fun. You saw something in MMA that no one else saw at the time, right? And you, you were able to build it into what it is today. Is there something in slap fighting that you see that I can make that? A juggernaut as well or is it just I think this can be fun it can be silly it can be great for a lot of people what do you see in slap fighting that makes you want to get involved in it yeah no I saw this like I said back in 17 or 18 uh, and I and I thought it was very appealing and and when you watch some of the stuff that's been very very low level and done it's uh, it's very compelling to watch on social media and um, you know, some of these places in Russia and Poland that have done it have 150 million views and billions of impressions. Um, there are people out there that are actually really good at it. There are people out there that have great personalities and that I think can be big stars and uh, everything is about timing. Mm -hmm. And I think the timing is right right now or we wouldn't have got this big television deal that we got. And especially you mentioned timing, right? You've got a a rise of like apps like TikTok, which is short videos, viral content. You know, slaps don't take very long. That's perfect for a viral content platform, am I right? Like I said, the, the lower level, not done well uh, stuff that's out there has 150 million views and billions of impressions. So yeah, this works on social media. Two more quick ones for you. I know you hate these sort of things. John Jones, where is he? Are we going to see this guy fight again this year? Can we get that done? Or is it next year? What do you think with John? Yeah, I'm hoping that, that, that we get him early next year or, uh, you know, in the spring. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I saw Hamzat Shemaev is in town it's here uh, to watch the fights and stuff. I have a pitch for you for what I would like to see for his career. Okay. And if you wouldn't mind doing that for me, I'd really appreciate it. No problem. Anything you, for you. Thank you. I, and, I know, and I appreciate that day off yeah. you gave me about the yeah, Apex. No, it's a, always a pleasure to give you guys a day off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did enjoy the beer and pizza that you offered, though, that I got to go home and take. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Hamza, you got Kamara and Leon rematching, yep. pro probably in London. Yep. I think the co-main event for that should be Hamzat versus Colby. I agree with you. Cool. Let's book it. All right. Is I'm that on it. is that confirmed? I'll get it done. <laughs> Thank you. Dana, I appreciate right. you.